Hey, Goya. Here we go, here we go. Goya. <laughs> uh, parents, parents, parents. Goya. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Goya! Goya! Good morning and welcome to Commodore's eighth grade promotion. I am Mrs. Stubblefield, principal of Commodore, and I'd like to do all things. Uh, I'd like to introduce a couple of people that are very important, and without these people, this would never have come together. Um, and they are um, teachers, Ms. He, um, Mr. Perez, Mr. Gates, our counselor, Mrs. Donati, our assistant principal, Mrs. Clark, and our program specialist, Mr. McFadden. Thank you to all of you and your um, dedication. This has been an interesting school year. It's been full of challenging times and fun times. At the beginning of the school year, everyone was so excited to be back in person and a little bit nervous too. But you made it through, and now we are going to celebrate your accomplishments, not only for this year, but for all of your school years thus far. Parents, 
Today is one of those great occasions when we get to celebrate our young people, their achievements, their perseverance, and their successes as they grow up. Students, you should know that your moms and dads are very proud of you today. They have high hopes for you and they believe in you and you are making them proud by showing what you can do. Today is an important day for you and for them. When I first came to Commodore as assistant principal, you were in second grade. I remember you as being very welcoming to me. As second graders, you were friendly, curious, and funny. Although some of, of those things, some although some things have changed as you've grown into promoting eighth graders, those qualities have remained with you. Though these are wonderful qualities to have and will help you throughout your life. Promotions can be seen as a coming of age, a sort of official way to recognize when a person steps into the next stage of life. And eighth graders, you are stepping into a new stage. I ask you as, as you prepare for this new stage to do a few things. I ask you take the chance to dedicate yourself to making the next year even better. Remember that you don't have to follow the crowd. Do the right thing even if no one is looking. Study hard and remember that you're investing in yourself with every test you take and every book you read. <clears throat> and finally, oh, I, didn't, I knew I wasn't going to get through this without two years. Um, can you pass the tissues, please? I prepared. Um, and finally, thank you. Don't be in too big of a hurry to grow up. These are some great times in your life. Don't rush through them. There are great things coming, and just as your parents are proud, each of each one of you should feel proud of yourselves. I would like to thank all the parents for all the support and encouragement you've given your children over the years. Thank you to all the teachers and everyone else who helped our promoting eighth graders reach their goal today. You may have noticed as the students entered that some of them had little white cords. Those are our students that are promoting with honors, so congratulations to them. And then there are students that have red and white cords, and those are Mesa students. And congratulations to you. You did very well in Mesa this year. Please join me in congratulating Commodore's eighth grade promoting class of 2022. <laughs> Next, we are going to have George Jimenez give the Pledge of Allegiance. Everybody have their right hands over their chest. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may sit. Thank you very much. Now we have our um, promotion speeches. Our next speaker is Stephen Avila. Good morning, everyone. First, I just want to say that I'm honored to be able to deliver this speech to you. I'd also like to give thanks to all of the people who helped set this up, because we wouldn't be able to experience this moment without you. I'd like to thank my teachers who helped guide me to success in eighth grade. Thank you to my parents for always being there when I needed them. Last, I'd like to thank my classmates and friends who were there for me and supported me throughout all of middle school. I would not have made it through this year without you guys. To begin, I'd like to share a quote by Tom Barrett, former mayor of Milwaukee. Chaos in the world brings uneasiness, but it allows the opportunity for creativity and growth. This year has been tough to say the least, 
It was a big change from sixth grade. There was no transition. Nothing could prepare me for what this year would be like. Allow me to share my experience with you. Let's go back two years to the beginning of the pandemic. It was nearing the end of school when our lives took an unexpected turn. We were no, long, we were no longer allowed to attend in-person school. We had to do all of our work online. There was a drastic change from how school was run before to now, where the classroom was our bed. I remember how chaotic everything had been. There was panic and uncertainty. We all had no choice but to adapt to quick changes in our lives. It sucked. For the rest of sixth grade and all of seventh grade, I didn't get to experience what kids before me had the luxury of being able to live through, being a kid. It sounds dramatic, but it really feels that way. I was stuck inside, my computer being the one way I could truly talk to all of my friends. Luckily, eighth grade was different. We got to go back to school. I was excited, but little did I know how unprepared I was for the sudden change. I had to actually get ready for school now. I couldn't just sign onto a meeting while I played games in the background. There was a lot of pressure. I had to adjust to walking to class, lugging around a backpack with heavy books. <laughs> Don't even get me started on PE. <laughs> even after I adjusted, the struggle wasn't over. Getting good grades wasn't as easy as it was online. I hadn't really paid attention to class over Zoom, so my mental stamina was not enough for me to handle in person class. I found myself constantly feeling tired, having trouble following lessons, and always doing work last minute. But I pushed through that and adjusted. Now I'm here with all of my peers getting ready to go to high school. I know I'm not the only person who shares this experience. I know there are people not only at the school that have felt this way, but people from all around the world who had difficulty because of the pandemic caused by COVID-19. All of you experienced some type of difficulty with the, with the events of the past two years. So I want you to know that you are all strong. You made it through another chapter of life. We as humans have grown and evolved from this traumatic experience. I have grown and evolved. We learn things from about ourselves. We were brought closer together through the chaos. It strengthened our relationships with our families and friends as we pushed through. Whatever was thrown at us, we adapted and overcame. If we learned anything from this, it's that we can endure and overcome. We have gone through tough times and it's up for us to take those opportunities that will allow us to push through the struggle. We can make it through life together, just one step at a time. Thank you. Wow, you guys really did a great job. I can tell you put a lot of effort into that and um, makes my speech look kind of shabby. <laughs> but um, thank you so much. You guys did a wonderful job. Um, the next, our next presenter is Mrs. Clark with our Hazelton Awards. This is always an exciting time. Good morning, Cougars. I am so excited to be here at your promotion. And I'm very honored to announce the next uh, recipients of the 8th grade Hazelton Awards. But before I get to that part, I'd like to share a little bit of the history of the Hazelton Awards. So William T. Hazelton was a pioneer teacher in Stockton during the late 1890s. He taught in the old Lafayette School, the second public school building in Stockton, located at the corner of San Joaquin and Market Streets, which are downtown. Later, as a dentist, he made a substantial contribution to the city of Stockton during his lifetime by donating $72,000 for the first city library. The Hazelton School was named in his honor in 1916. In his last will and testament, dated December 26, 1872, Dr. Hazelton bequeathed $1,000 to be held in trust by the city of Stockton as a perpetual fund for financing silver prize medals for deserving scholars. As you guys know, those silver prize medals are had they been changed into the plaque in the office where your name kind of joins a hall of fame okay so you'll always be remembered there the first income from the bequest was received in 1892 and an ordinance passed by the city council assigned the management of the fund to the board of education designated the hazelton school medal the first awards were distributed in 1896 and went to three senior high school students 11 in the grammar grades, and 34 primary grade pupils. The selections were based on attendance, punctuality, and deportment, which is your overall 
behavior and attitude towards things. Scholarship figured only as a factor in breaking ties. In his last will and testament, William T. Hazelton indicated his purpose and intent. He quotes, remembering the time when I was a child and appreciating the value which children attach to the marks of approbation bestowed upon them by their elders, it is my wish as one of the pioneer teachers of the city of Stockton, state of California, that there shall be an annual award of prizes to the most deserving of the scholars attending the public schools of said city. Without further ado, I'd like to announce our recipients. Our first award recipient is Stephen Avila. Ha, ha, ha. 